Hey, what's going on, DDO players? Axel here. In this video, I'm going to go through all the adventure packs in DDO and talk about which ones you should buy and which ones you might want to avoid. I was asked to do this video by a player that was thinking about buying some adventure packs but wasn't sure which ones to spend their money on. So hopefully this video will help you if you're one of those players that wants to buy more content but isn't sure which ones to buy. So let's go to all the adventure packs in the game and I actually created this alternate account so that I can show you the adventure packs on the DDO store. Uh, my main account I already own most of these adventure packs so they would not show up otherwise. And I'll start with the low level adventure packs and hopefully you can see this on YouTube okay if not you might have to uh, full screen the video so that you can see this store window in the video but we'll start with the first one here which is the catacombs and the catacombs is a very low level adventure pack uh, it's a few quests that are in the marketplace well actually they're on the side of the marketplace and most of this adventure pack takes place in undead themed dungeons you'll fight a lot of skeletons this adventure pack I would definitely recommend you not buy uh, first of all, you really don't have to buy any adventure packs if you don't want to if, if for your low levels. There's plenty of free content available to get up to, geez, even level 13 or 14. So if you are, really want to be cheap and you don't want to buy any adventure packs, you can go with, uh, you don't even have to buy any of this low level stuff. But I will go over which ones are good. And some of them have epic support as well. So you should definitely consider buying some of them. But the catacombs is its uh, XP is not particularly good the loot is very bad you're gonna outdate it there might be a thing or two you could use but it's gonna quickly be out leveled um, it is cheap uh, also it's it's just not that fun uh, this quest is this quest series is known by many players for being very confusing with the quest giver it's very easy to get on the wrong part and the quests themselves are very repetitive there's a lot of skeletons skeletons and more skeletons so you can pass on the catacombs there's not you're not going to miss anything here and of course there's no epic support for this either okay shantukor is a quest series that takes place in the sewers of the marketplace as far as fun it's decent it's it's sort of fun there's some uh, a lot of traps to avoid and the end boss is a giant golem which actually has a unique um a unique body style that you actually don't see anywhere else in the game but the quests themselves are a lot like the waterworks uh, I would not buy this just because the XP is decent but not a must-have uh, there's not really there, there's a few okay pieces of loot but nothing that you absolutely have to have you'll quickly out level it uh, let's move to the Sharn Syndicate the Sharn Syndicate is actually pretty well designed it's a series of quests in the marketplace um, that revolve around a gang a uh, gang of thieves that you have to stop. The quest design is actually pretty good. Uh, there's a few interesting quests that that are have a different feel than some of the other low-level quests, but they're very short. Uh, there's really not any good loot from this pack, and the XP is not that great, and it's not run very much. So I would not recommend you buy this one for that reason. Okay, let's get on to Delirious Tomb, which is the first pack I'm going to say absolutely buy. This is probably the only low level pack that you really must buy um, it has a few great things going for it there's some really awesome loot in this pack you've got the carnifix great axe which is pr probably the best two-handed weapon for low levels probably all the way up until you get to level 9 or 10 or maybe even 11 when you get your green steel but all the way up to, really up to level 10 or 11 it's probably the best two-handed weapon in the game and also it drops the voice of the master which is a trinket that gives you plus five percent experience points when it's equipped and you'll want to use that trinket out throughout the whole game uh, every time you finish a quest you want to put your voice on that's why everyone in games says put your voice on uh, you want that trinket so you get the xp bonus also this pack is narrated by gary gygax the co-creator of pen and paper dnd &D. A lot of players like it for that reason. It also has a very classic pen and paper feel to it uh, with the dungeons. So definitely buy this one. It's well worth it. And you can see it's priced a little bit higher. But you get a lot of adventures out of it. And it's definitely worth the purchase. Let's move on to Tangle Root. Tangle Root is very good XP. 
but it has a few downsides. It is very repetitive. Um, it's a series of, I think it's like seven or eight quests, but they all take place in the same dungeon. It's very repetitive. You're doing the same thing over and over. But it is run fairly often because the XP is so good and because it has some good loot. Um, it This is the only quest in the game that drops a Death Ward clicky. So if you're a class that does not, if you're not a divine class, you'll want a, at least one Death Ward clicky from this quest chain, if not more. So uh, it's fun. I can't say this is a fun quest, a uh, fun pack, but it does have good loot and good XP, so I would recommend you buy it. Okay, the Necropolis, and I'm just going to talk about all four parts because the Necropolis has um, parts 1, 2, 3, and 4, which span a variety of level ranges up to level 20. I would recommend you not buy any of these except for part 4. Part 4 has epic support. It's by far the best designed of all the uh, different parts of the Necropolis. Uh, part 4 also has an adventure area, which the other ones do not have. And the Necropolis Parts 1, 2, and 3 are quests that are not run a whole lot. The XP is pretty good, but they're very complicated quests. They're tough quests. They're not solo friendly, and you face a lot of undead. It can get uh, a little repetitive. So I would not recommend any of the Necropolis packs except for 4. Devil's Assault is a pack that I would recommend for a few reasons. The XP is pretty normal. Uh, it might actually be low because uh, with this pack you get Devil's Assault, which is a kind of a defensive quest where you stay in one room and face waves of enemies, and you also get the uh, the Chronoscope Raid. Uh, uh, also, Devil's Assault is a quest that is excellent for farming tokens of the Twelve. If you're going to look to TR from level 20 down to 1 often to get heroic pass lives. It's a great pack to have. And the Chronoscope Raid is a great raid to have. It's you know it's it's really outdated. None of the loot's any good anymore, but it's still a pretty good XP run. And it's run fairly often. A lot of players like it, and it's one of the best design raids in the game. So I would recommend that you buy Devil's Assault, although it's not a must-have. Sorrow Dusk Isle. Sorrow Dusk is a it has an adventure area. It takes place obviously on an island. It, it's a story that revolves around ogres that are being taken captive. A lot of players don't like this quest series because there's some long runs back to the NPC uh, and there's some r long runs to quests in general. And The XP is okay but because of the long runs it, it's not as good as other packs. The loot is r really not that great there's a couple nice pieces for the level range, but nothing you have to have or won't uh, level out quickly. Uh, I personally love Sorrow Dusk. I understand why a lot of players don't. I find it very immersive, and I really like the story. But that's just my opinion. A lot of players do not like it. Um, I would recommend it just because I enjoy it. But that this is just purely on a personal opinion. If we're talking just loot and XP, it's not the best pack. And it's definitely not a must-have. Move on to Three Barrel Cove, which has support for low levels, four to seven, and uh, it's also mid has mid epic uh, versions of these quests. It's a beautiful adventure area. This is a pirate themed adventure pack. Uh, the whole adventure area is like a beach. Uh, it's on a tropical island, something like you would see in a Pirates of the Caribbean movie. The epic levels of these quests have some nice loot in them. It's a very well-designed quest series. I really enjoy uh, the quests. I think they're very creative. I think they're well done. Uh, the adventure area is beautiful. So for that reason, I would recommend that you buy the Three Barrel Cove pack. Uh, okay, let's move on to House P Carnival. Uh, House P actually has epic support as well. It's low-level epics, though. I would recommend that you buy House P because the quests are just very fun and very well designed. I know fun, that's a that's an opinion, but they are well designed. Party Crashers in particular is one quest that I think is beautiful in parts and it's very creative. 
uh, House P does, you do get a lot of value because it does have epic level support and it has some decent loot. Stuff like the epic antique great axe is still nice for your low epic levels. It is low epics though, and the XP is decent but not great. But because the quests are well designed, I would recommend you buy it. But it's not a must buy by any means. Okay, let's move on. These two on the bottom, these are just bundles. So that's all for the low levels. So in summary for the low levels, definitely buy Deliras. That's your number one quest pack to buy. Um, nothing else is a must have. Nothing else is a must-have, but if you have the money and want to spend it, you might want to look at Three Roll Cove first, and then possibly Tangle Root if you want the Death Word clicky, and what else? Maybe Devil's Assault if you want a Heroic TR. Alright, well, let's go to our mid-level packs. And it looks like some of these are repeated. Okay, the first one we're going to get to is Giant Hold. Now, this is a must-buy if you're looking to go to up to mid-levels and through epic levels. It's a must-buy because you get a great value from this pack. You get, oh, what is it? I think it's like 10 quests or something. You get two raids, a huge adventure area, and there's epic level support for this as well. So you just get a ton, a ton of uh, value for this pack a lot of XP in this pack. These quests are good XP. Uh, the loot is um it's not it's okay. Uh, the raid loot like you get two raids, Follow Truth is the epic raid. The heroic raid is not run much anymore, but the raid the loot from Follow Truth is pretty good. You have a great sword that's good. You got some other weapons that are nice, some trinkets. Uh it's decent. You, you've got some healer gloves in there. But the main reason you want this pack is because you get so much value for your money. You just get so many quests in two different level ranges. You get heroic and epic level support. So definitely buy that one. Uh, Demon Sands. This is another one, a good one to buy. Not not as important as Giant Hold, but it has heroic and epic level support. So you get a lot of value. But other than the Tomb of the Wizard King, these this quest series has not run a whole lot. Um, it has some good loot, but it's incredibly difficult to upgrade a lot of the really good loot into epics. It has the torque in it, which is an item you can wear which rejuvenates your SP when you get hit. A lot of people like that item. It's good for, for solars. Uh, but because uh, this pack is actually very well designed, the adventure pack is, is pretty, but there are some very long runs to these quests. It does have a raid, the Demon Queen. But again, it's a, it's a very long run to all of these quests. So for that reason, uh, I would say buy it, but it's not a must-have by any means anymore. Um, Vault of Night is our next adventure pack here. Vault of Night takes place in House K. It's very, very, very good XP. One of the best XP packs in the game. So if you're looking to... Um, get a lot of XP in the mid levels and in epic levels you'll want this pack it's not a must buy but it's one of the top I would say top definitely top 10 packs to buy you do get a raid Vaughn 5 and 6 which is run a whole lot uh, Vaughn 5 the first part of the raid is great XP it has some really nice items that drop from the raid like the Sword of Shadow which is awesome for it's actually the best weapon, best two-handed fighting weapon in heroics that you can get. And if you manage to epify it, which you probably won't be able to because the shard to upgrade that sword has a tiny drop rate. And you're lucky if you see it um, before DDO shuts down. But uh, probably the best sword up to up until Thunderforge, so up until like level 26, 27. It's the best sword, sword in the game if you manage to get that epic shard but Vault of Night overall is just great XP so if you can get it definitely get it okay Sentinels I believe Sentinels is the house D chain it does have epic and heroic support but the XP is not that great uh, the quest design is decent uh, it has several pirate themed quests oh, Oh, I do actually want to point out that one of the quests 
uh, spies in the house is excellent XP. It's probably the best XP per minute in the game right now, uh, but it has a lot of Mario stuff going on with it. Uh, definitely not a must buy pack, but some of the reasons why that pack is probably the only reason is spies in the house. The the loot isn't that great, um, but it's one you could consider. You do get a decent value because it does have, as I said, heroic and epic level support. The red fins is sort of in the same boat with Sentinels. The XP is okay, but not that great. The loot is all outdated. The quest design is, it's okay. Uh, there's some interesting things with it. The the last quest in the series is the only quest in the game where you're actually underwater and you kind of fight underwater, which is kind of a cool little twist. It does have heroic and epic level support, so you get a decent value from this pack, but it's not a must-buy by any means. Okay, Runes of Thernal I cannot comment on because I don't own it, and I've never actually played this pack. I've heard nothing but bad things about it, though. I've heard it's complicated and not the best XP. It does. I don't believe it has epic level support. Restless Isles I also is the other pack in this game which I don't do not own and I've heard nothing but bad things about it so I can't recommend it but again I haven't played it so I'll just pass on that and not comment. Tacom Stormreach is fun. It is a level 13 quest series. There's some very well designed quests in the game. There's a quest where you have to kind of invade a fortress of minotaurs. That's really neat. There's a quest where you have to chase kobolds who are blowing uh, like blowing up walls and have dynamite so you kind of have to avoid getting yourself killed that one is a really fun one um, the only downside about it oh and the XP is pretty good um, the only downside about it is there is no epic level support for this so you're only gonna get to play it around the level 13 to 15 range but quests are very well designed so I would buy it for that reason but if you're just trying to save money it's definitely not a must buy by any means all right let's move on to the oh i want to summarize before i move on so in summary with the mid mid epic the mid level stuff giant hold is your number one you want to buy this because it's such a great value your number two is going to be your number two and three are going to be Demon Sands and Vault of Night because you get a lot of value out of these packs. The other ones you don't have to buy unless you want to, but definitely buy Giant Hold and if you can buy Demon Sands and Vault of Night. Okay, let's move on to the. I think it's the last part. No, there's epics. Okay, let's move to high level quests. Um, and some of these are repeated again. Devil's Assault is actually repeated because there's a level 6, 12, and 18 version. Okay, the first one, Veil of Twilight. This is one of the best adventure packs in the game. You definitely want to buy this, especially if you're going to buy, if you're going to play into Heroic TR, uh, you're absolutely going to want to buy this. It has a series of four quests, plus you get three raids, two which take place in the Subterron, which is a separate raid adventure area that's in the marketplace. The Veil of Twilight is one of the most popular packs ever in DDO, and it has the Shroud Raid, which is the most successful raid in DDO's history, and pretty much everyone, well not everyone, but it, pretty unanimously, the players in this game have considered the Shroud the best raid ever made in DDO. It also has the best heroic gear you can get. You can get green steel crafting which gives you level uh, weapons that are minimum level 11 which are almost unmatched by anything you can pick up in the regular heroic quest. So you definitely want Veil of Twilight if you plan to heroic TR. If you don't want a heroic TR I would still recommend you buy it because just because it's such a great pack. The Shroud is still has a lot of useful gear even even for low epics it's still really nice gear. And also, the Veil of Twilight is going to be epified. There's no epic support right now, but it's going to be epified in the near future. Probably, uh, well, the developers haven't told us when, but probably, I would guess, by the end of 2015. Okay, let's move on to Reaver's Reach. Reaver's Reach is very good XP. 
the loot is not so great however the the main draw with reaver's reach is dragon touched armor crafting and that has long since been outdated the quests however i think are exceptionally well designed there's how many i think there's three separate there's three or four i'm trying to remember i can't remember but there's three or four separate adventure areas in this pack and they're all very well designed all the quests in this game you've got uh prey on the hunter which you have to go through a maze you fight giants it's one of the few adventure areas in the game that's uh, kind of frozen themed it's cold themed uh, there's some there's also a in quest called stealer of souls where you fight a a giant um i can't remember which one um it's like Sorjak. it was a quest that is was almost a raid it was actually designed with it being a raid in mind it ended up not being a raid but it's still a really fun quest it's very i find the quest series very immersive these are not run a whole lot however and a lot of people don't like it and there is no epic level support so all i can say is i really enjoyed it but most people would probably say pass on the pack devils of shavarath this used to be the quote unquote end game when cap was 20 there's a raid uh, tower despair that comes with this pack there is no epic level support but there in update 26 i believe it, this is actually going to be epified before the veil they are going to make it epic so i would definitely buy it for that reason the quests are very well designed they're actually they're really complicated they're very difficult though if you run this this uh this at level before epic levels like on level 19 before you have destinies it's very difficult um, you face a lot of devils and angels thematically it's very cool lore wise it's very cool it feels epic it feels like in game so definitely buy this pack i think it's one of the best design packs in the game and you will get epic support soon for it uh passive path of inspiration is good xp it takes place uh north of the harbor there's a quest where you actually have to go inside a halfling's dream there's you fight a lot of kind of weird monsters in this pack i i can't i can't think of the name i don't know if extra planar is the right name but the quests are unique the xp is good but because it has no epic level support i can't really recommend it there is some good loot out of this pack um trying to think I, i'm trying to think of the name of it um i i it's, i'm drawing a blank but there's some decent loot in this pack but i can't really recommend it because there's no epic support okay dreaming dark kind of goes along with the path of inspiration it's you know i i can't recommend this one it's there's some decent xp but there's just no reason to run these quests there are some oh gosh what are they called the there's some like gems that you can equip your trink trinket slot i believe from this pack that you can actually wear at low levels that can give you like sp bonuses so maybe if you're considering tring you could get this but it's just a quest pack that just isn't run a whole lot and there's a lot of better options of stuff to run in this quest in this level range than this you, i can't really recommend it okay harbinger harbinger is xp is okay the loot is out really outdated it's kind of fun if you like the delirium quests that have like the beholders and all the weird funky like drug inspired <laughs> kind of quests i don't know if they actually were but it seems like someone was on drugs when they designed this uh, if you like those weird kind of quests with the taken and that whole storyline then you'll probably like this but it's not run a whole lot there's no must have loot the xp is just okay so i can't recommend it and i was kind of give all these same all this applies also to random madness which is a related pack it's very weird but it's not run a whole lot the xp is decent the loot is not really something you need it's not really any must have loot in these packs 
Okay, Secret of the Artificers absolutely do not buy. This is a pack that is actually pretty well designed. It takes place in House, uh, right beside House Can How well actually it takes place in House Caneth. Uh, and it revolves around Warforged and Artificers and kind of a lot of con you have a lot of constructs in this pack. And the quests are actually pretty well designed, but absolutely nobody runs it. There are the two raids, Master Artificer and Lord of Blades associated with this pack, and they are almost never run. There is actually some decent loot, though. You have your health, um, you have your Caneth Boots Propulsion, which um, are some awesome boots. They have Featherfall and kind of a jump, a uh, jump boost on them. But other than the Caneth Propulsion boots, I just can't recommend this pack at all. It has a crafting system called Alchemical Crafting associated with it, but there's not really any reason to use it over Green Steel. And you're never going to find a group to raid with. Okay, Druid's Deep. Uh, I would not recommend you buy this. I think the quests are not that well designed. I think they're a little bit... A little boring. They're kind of a rehash of a lot of the Menace of the Underdark quests. They feel sort of the same to me. There's no... There used to be some good loot in here. Like the Monk Wraps. The Ivy Wraps that are in here. But there's no must-have loot in here anymore. And the XP just isn't that great. Um, it is run fairly often, but I can't really recommend it. I just don't think it's that well designed. Okay, the high road. I think these quests are pretty fun. Uh, this takes place north of Evening Star. The XP is good, uh, but there's no must-have loot in here either. It's kind of out of date. Um, you get some cool stuff from the favor from this pack. Uh, with Harper favor, you might, if you want to use the Harper tree, you might need to buy this pack because you need Harper favor to unlock the Harper enhancement tree. I believe if you get it for free, if you, uh, if you're a VIP, and you might be able to buy it from the store. Actually, I'm not sure, but if you want Harper favor, you might want to get this pack. Um, you also can get some Harper pins, which are clickies uh, from Harper favor, and those remove crowd control effects on you so those are decent heart of madness is a brand new it's almost brand new it came in i believe it was update 24 can't recommend it though there's really not any compelling loot in this pack the quests are pretty well designed it's it's more of the weird taken slash beholder slash kind of drug druggy kind of inspired content it's very weird, psychedelic stuff, but there's just no reason to run it. Uh, it's hardly ever run, even though it's almost brand new. It's actually the newest content in DDO right now, but it's almost never run because there's no compelling reason to run it. The XP is only decent, and there's no compelling loot. So I can't recommend it. Okay, and now we're going to get to some of the... Let me see. Okay, now we're going to get to the expansions. There's two expansions in DDO, and these are not free to anyone, not even VIPs. There's Shadowfell, and there's Menace of the Underdark. Menace of the Underdark is a must-buy. Shadowfell Conspiracy, you do not have to buy unless you want it. But, but Menace of the Underdark includes... It includes... Actually, oh, I want to mention, do not buy this from the store. Go to the DDO Marketplace, which you can find on DDO's website to buy the expansions because you get more with your purchase than if you just buy them off the store here. Uh, but you get with with uh, Menace of the Underdark you get just a ton of different content. Uh, you get all kinds of Evening Star content. You get a Dro City chain. You get a raid in Cotton the Web. You get let me see one. You get the King's Forest chain. I believe, it, oh, you also get the demon web chain. So you get three quest change chains, which have about three to four quests each. So that's about 12 quests. Um, I believe you get a quest or two in the Evening Star Town. I can't remember for sure, though. But you get a ton of quests with this, with this pack, or with this expansion. You also get Epic Destinies, which you have to have to play in 
uh, epic levels and epic death scenes are basically your epic enhancements without those your character is going to be horrible so you have to have epic destinies so you absolutely should buy you also get the druid pack if you buy menace of the underdark and you get a few other things with the menace of the underdark standard edition so go to the ddo marketplace and check that out and also these things go on sale all the time for 50 to 75 percent sale uh, 50 to 75 percent off so don't buy the menace of the underdark expansion unless it's on sale you also don't need it until you're level 20 uh, because all the content is epic so if you are not looking to uh, if you're a new player you don't even need to think about this right now just wait for a sale and buy it then Shadowfell conspiracy you get two adventure packs you get storm horns and you get the uh, Wayloon prison chain you don't you don't get any raids though um, unlike Menace of the Underdark where you get one raid however the Menace of the Underdark raid caught in the web is not run a whole lot so it's sort of a wash um, Shadowfell Conspiracy uh, the, the loot is mostly outdated at this point but there are some uh, good quests here the Stormhorns is definitely the prettiest adventure area and the best graphics in DDO and those quests are very well designed the Wailing Prison I can't say the same for that I don't think they're particularly well designed they have a lot of annoying things in them that players hate like the Shatter Kai assassins they can prevent your character from moving basically uh, well from attacking a lot of players don't like that and like I said there's no loot that's must buy the XP is very good though um, I would almost say buy this just for storm horns but if you don't want to buy it you don't have to it's not must have on unlike menace of the underdark Okay, so I think that's it for the high-level stuff. Just to give you a kind of rundown. Veil, vale, absolutely buy. Um, Devils of Shavarath, buy for sure, because it's going to be epic soon. Same with Veil vale of Twilight. Um, everything else, you do not have to buy. Veil vale and Devils are the only two must-buys, in my opinion. And as far as the expansions go, buy Menace of the Underdark. It's a must. Um, Shadowfell Conspiracy, if you want to, you can buy it, but it's not a must-have. Alright, and let's see. Adventures, let's go to Epic Level. I think I covered them all. Let me see. Oh, no, we've got the... Let me see. Oh, we've got a couple more. Okay. So we've got... We've got Thunderholm, which Thunderholm has the newest raids in the game. It has the Fire Peaks raid and the Deathworm raid. And it also has the best, um, the best weapons in the game right now with the Thunderforge crafting. So you'll you'll want to buy this um, just because it is the newest raids. It does have some of the best loot in the game right now. It is, um, it's not that much of a grind to get a really good tier two Thunderforge weapon out of this pack. Um, tier three is a huge grind, but you can pretty easily get a tier 2 thunderforged weapon out of this pack and also the best armor in the game which is a uh, thunderforged shadow plate is in this pack so the loot is awesome um, you also get a in addition to the two raids you also get a, a, a raid adventure area which is awesome XP as well so awesome XP awesome uh, awesome loot However, this pack, more than any other in the game, suffers from some lag problems, particularly the Deathworm Raid and the Adventure Area. So just be aware of that. I still recommend you buy it, and the developers are working on fixing the lag in this pack. So even though it has some lag problems, definitely buy it, and the lag is getting better. Haunted Halls of Evening Star, if you are a pen and paper D&D &D player, you absolutely 100% will want to buy this pack. It's a classic recreation of a classic module. It's the first one to come into the game. The second one, the Temple of Elemental Evil, is coming out fairly soon. Um, but Haunted Halls of Evening Star is just a huge quest. It's only one quest, but it's a huge quest. Um, great for those of you who want to explore Dungeon Crawl. Uh, Dungeon Crawl has some really great loot in it. Um, the XP is good. But it's just very well-designed content, and most players right now consider the Haunted Halls the 
best quest in DDO period. So definitely buy this in a for sure buy it if you're a pen and paper player. What else? I think that's it, guys. Um, so overall, for the epics, Haunted Halls, definitely buy. And Thunder Home, absolutely buy. Um, I think that's it. Yep, so overall, I just want to end the video with an overall kind of diagnosis here so I can break stuff down for you guys. Um, I have them written down in a list. The ones you absolutely want to buy are Delirious Tomb, Giant Hold, um, Veil of Twilight, Devils of Shavarath, and the Menace of the Underdark expansions. Expansion. It's only one expansion. Those are the only ones you must buy. You can easily get through all of the content and all the way up to cap with just those. If you want to buy a few more, some of the next best packs to buy are Three Barrel Cove, House Peak Carnival, Vault of Night, Demon Sands. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe and tell your DDO friends and guildies about my channel. Thanks for watching.